Hello, today we are going to talk about how renters face affordability crisis. The Supreme Court struck the CDC eviction moratorium down one year ago, putting thousands of renters at risk of being evicted. Since then, eviction filings had dropped back to pre-pandemia levels and, in some areas, even surpassed them. While the job market has mostly recovered from the early days of COVID-19, inflation and skyrocketing rents have pushed many renters deeper in debt. The labor market is slowly recovering, but around 15% of renters are behind on their rent payments, a persistently high figure, according to data from the Harvard Joint Center for Housing Studies. In the latest Realtors.com report, the average cost of renting across the country rose by 12.3% in July from July 2021, and increased by 23.2% from July 2020. It stood at an eye-wateringly $1,879 a month. While rent is rising rapidly, wages are not keeping pace. Median weekly wages for both men and women were only $1,045 per month before taxes in the second quarter of 2020, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, which is about $4,528 per month before taxes. That means that households earning that much money would pay more than 41% of their income on rent. People who spend more than 30% of their income on rents are considered cost burdened, meaning they might struggle to afford necessities such as food and transportation. Evictions issues stretch beyond tenancies who fall behind on rent. While evictions can appear as a clear-cut issue, people who don't meet their obligations as per their lease agreement are removed from the property, the reality is much more complicated. Unlawful evicts and landlords who use eviction files to scare tenants compound an existing precarious rental market. There's no official data on unlawful evictions on a national scale as the federal government doesn't track evictions. Instead the data is largely fractured and limited in historical scope, but there's evidence that unlawful evictions have been going down before, during and after the pandemic. Illegal evictions are definitely a problem with the system says Thomas Pritiman, a lawyer at New Mexico Legal Aid, they certainly happened before the pandemia, and they've happened after the pandemia. Formal legal evictions may occur when judges aren't familiar with certain laws and errantly side with the landlord. Informal evictions are instances where landlords evict tenants without going through the proper process. Pritiman speculates about the motivation to evict tenants illegally was greater during the CDC moratorium, prohibiting landlords from evicting tenants, because of the high rate of illegal evictions during the moratorium. This hypothesis has some weight, as evidenced by a recently conducted survey of 6,000 renter in Philadelphia by Community Legal Service and the Housing Initiative at Pennsylvania University. The survey showed that illegal evictions in which landlords lock renters into apartments, threaten them, pay rent to move, or otherwise forced them to move without a hearing increased during the pandemic, especially among large corporations. A high-profile example of landlord abuse is the recent case investigated by the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Crisis which found evidence of widespread abusive eviction practices by four major corporate landlords. Precium Incorporated, Invitation Homes, Ventro Homes, and the Siegel Group. Among their illegal tactics were not adhering to CDC eviction moratorium rules or federal rental assistance programs. In total, they filed 14,744 eviction cases between March 15, 2020 and July 29, 2021 including 1,500 cases where they did not provide any notice to the tenant before filing an eviction action. At the same time, these companies each displayed evidence of financial stability, Invitation Homes reported record profits, Precium invested in significant expansions, Siegel experienced almost no revenue decline, and both Ventron and Siegel each received more than $2 million in Forgiven Paycheck Protection Program funds, the report states.
Pratiman says landlords often evict people without just cause, but not enough pro bono lawyers are willing to represent tenants, and most tenants cannot afford to pay a lawyer. An important piece to housing stability is to evaluate rules around evictions, Pratiman says. Albuquerque has roughly 11,000 evictions per year, and three judges hear these. Each case is a few minutes, and everybody gets evicted unless they have a lawyer. And very few people have a lawyer. Tenants who receive U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, Housing Choice Voucher and live in hud assisted housing are also exposed to illegal landlord practices, according to NHLP report, which includes responses from 148 legal aid lawyers. One of the most flagrantly violation included both public housing authorities, PHAs, and voucher landlords ignoring the federal 30-day notice requirement, to which the courts are also turning a blind eye. Some 88% of attorneys reported inconsistent or no court enforcement of requirement. Landlords increased rents without PHA's approval leading to some evicts. Landlords are required to give a 60 or 90 day notice of rent increase to tenants before raising rent, per federal rules. Attorneys also claim landlords won't work with emergency rental assistance program, even when tenants documented pandemic related hardship. No one should be evicted from HUD assisted housing for not being able to pay rent, said Marie Claire Tran Lu, Evictions Initiative Project Director at the NHLP, in a statement. Evictions should be the last resort, especially at a time when skyrocketing rents and inflation have dramatically reduced the overall availability of affordable housing. New leases cost renters almost twice as much as renewals. Renters who want to leave their apartment face a steep increase in rent prices. A new lease costs $300 or more per month compared to $160 per month for renewing an existing one. Prohibitively expensive rents can trap renters in inadequate accommodations or force them to live further away from work or school because it's too costly to relocate. Many renters are finding themselves in a financially precarious situation. Their lease has reached that month-to-month -month status, but landlords are renewing these leases at much higher rates, says George Rashu, senior economist and manager of economic research at Realtor.com. Hal Martin, a senior economist at the Federal Reserve Bank in Cleveland, studied eviction data before and after COVID-19. He found that rents increased by about 1% per month during the period of March through May 2020. Meanwhile, the number of evictions rose by 2% per month. Eviction rates were highest in areas where rents had risen the fastest. There's a clear acceleration in evictions in places with higher rent growth, Martin says. It could be that if you have a tenant struggling to pay rent, the payoff to evict increases if you can raise the rent for the next tenant. While landlords have every legal right to maximize their income potential, especially as they confront inflationary pressures themselves, the problem persists that tenants have few options as the supply of affordable housing is scarce. Landlords, to a certain extent, have borne the burden of the government to provide housing for financially disadvantaged tenants. The rental vacancy rate is currently hovering around 5.6%, the lowest level since the mid-1980s, creating an imbalance between supply and demand that's fueling runaway rent hikes. A study by Rent Cafe showed that, in June 2018, there was an average of 14 renters vying for one apartment. The reasons behind the rental housing crisis hinge on three factors. 1. An undersupply of affordable rental housing. 2. Low wages. 3. A persistent lack of federal and local assistance to meet the need. In addition to wrongful eviction contributing to housing insecurity and homelessness, the real culprits are affordability, low wages, and the persistence of inadequate federal and state assistance to address the need. T. The national level, the National Low Income Housing Coalition reports that no states have enough affordable rental housing for low income families, 
an alarming fact given the increase in the number of homeless people who are unsheltered. For renters whose incomes are at or below the poverty line or 30% of the median income in the area where they live, there's an acute shortage of affordable rental homes. And although new multifamily construction is growing, most new development is geared toward middle and high income households. The additional supply will eventually benefit low income residents, but the trickle down effect takes some time. The National Low Income Housing Coalition estimates that people need to make $24.90 per hour to afford a rental home without having to spend more than 30% of their income, which falls within a broad guideline for a healthy personal financial situation. Nearly one third of the American workforce earns below $15 per hour. This means they struggle to make ends meet each month. For these hardworking Americans, federal assistance programs such as the Housing Choice Voucher Program can help. In 2017, about 5.2 million households received a housing voucher. However, only about 1.4 million actually used the voucher. That means that 3.8 million people were denied access to affordable housing because they didn't have a voucher. What lawmakers are doing about the rental crisis is they're not doing much of anything. They've got a lot of ideas, but none of them are working. And if they did work, they'd just make things worse. For example, they could try to fix the housing market, but that would only make prices go up. Or they could try to give people money so they could afford rent, but then landlords would raise rents to cover the cost. So what we really need is a better understanding of how the housing market works. That's where economists come in. Economists study everything, including housing markets. And they know that the best way to get people into homes is to build more houses. But building more houses means building more apartments, condos, and single-family homes, more construction workers, more jobs, more tax revenue, more money for schools, more demand for goods and services, higher wages, lower unemployment, fewer people living in poverty, fewer homeless people, less crime, safer streets, more homeowners and more property taxes. The PHAs must partner with eligible continuums of care, COSEs, or other entities serving the targeted population. Redistribution of state stimulus funds on July 28, the U.S. Treasury Department issued guidance that would allow much of the $350 billion under the American Rescue Plan, ARP, under the State and Local Fiscal Recovery Funds, SLFRF, towards the development, repair, and operation of affordable housing units. Expanding the Evictions Protection Grant Program, HUD is issuing $20 million in new grants for the Evictions Protection Grant Program, twice the amount originally earmarked in November 2021. This program helps legal providers offer free legal counsel to low-income households facing eviction. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.